Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I pre-record these intros at times um, just to save me some time. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make yet. I kind of have an idea, but I don't want to say it because I have no clue. So um, if this is your first time here, welcome and thank you so much for joining me. I would love it if you became part of the DIY family by subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. So like we're doing as a tradition now on this channel, is sending some shout outs so for all of you guys here is my shout out thank you guys so much for joining me in this crazy adventure um, I really appreciate your guys's love and support if you guys do want a shout out make sure that you guys leave me down below a comment hey send me a shout out send so-and-so a shout out and I would love to have you guys be a part of this shout out roly thingy let's get on to the DIY so for all you craft supply hoarders, our day has come. So I would hate for you guys to just go out and about, you know, nonchalant buying craft supplies. Please use what you have in your stockpile. Figure it out. Shop your home for anything that you may use. You don't need to use the exact same things that I'm using. And this DIY is going to be nice and simple. That way, hopefully you guys have what you need. Um, and if not, feel free to just, you know, make it up as you go or just watch and enjoy and save this for later for when things go back to normal and you guys can go out and shop all the craft supplies that you want. So for today's video, this is gonna be super simple. These are just a few of the DIYs that I will be making. The first one, super simple, just this hurricane candle holder using a tall vase from Dollar Tree and then also a glass candle holder. Now I wanted to give this sort of like a stone look or like a concrete look. So I'm mixing some white acrylic paint and then the tiniest bit of chalk paint. So I literally put like a drop or two in there. And then also this Robin's Egg Blue, which is basically aqua, and then also Plaster of Paris. I've done several projects with Plaster of Paris and it's so fun and I love it. So Plaster of Paris, Mm, tongue tied and then some water and just mix it around so obviously it has water in it it's like watery but still sort of thick ish I guess <laughs> um, plaster of Paris dries really quickly so I'm trying to work with this as fast as I can um, but still I don't have the patience for it to sit there and dry so I do use my hair dryer to speed up the process um, so I'm just taking my first coat on there once it's dry I'm gonna do a second coat and I found that it's easier if you kind of tap the paint on there rather than brush it on because if you brush it the paint may move if it's not completely dry. I never felt tomorrow closing in this fast oh I guess time's in a rush For the next one, we're going to be making this really simple, thankful sign, hopefully with stuff you already have. Um, if not, again, you know, just go with it or save it for a later time. I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree wood blocks and this thankful sign from Dollar Tree as well. All right, so for the color, I'm gonna mix some white acrylic paint and a literal drop of the chalkboard paint, and it was really hard to just get one drop in there. And then for, from Craftsmart, I do have a paint color in khaki, and I'm gonna be using a good amount of that, and I'm gonna stain the wood blocks. So there's a shortage of baby wipes, toilet paper, paper towels, you guys know all about it. I was trying not to be wasteful. Um, I did have a box of tissues that I'm gonna use to stain my blocks. I used a total of 14 blocks and then also some wire, some silver wire from Dollar Tree to hang the plaque. Sometimes I understand I'm making all the wrong demands in life. It never pays in the end. But still I am.
this one is a recycled DIY for my previous video. The popular vote was to keep it just as you see it here. I had originally attached it to a different vase and I'll show you guys how I made it. So I took one of these glass Dollar Tree vases and as you can see it's all attached to the other one that I had made and I took some laundry line from Walmart which I think is about 100 feet long. I did link it in the description down below and then just wrapped it. Once I get to like the rounder, um, rounder part of the vase I did hot glue it just so it would stay put and this is what it looks like all wrapped up and attached to that vase uh, again I just removed it turned it upside down or right side up uh, I guess the right way and <laughs> just added some greenery of my own all right so for this next one I'm gonna make this faux stone looking planter or vase I'm sorry so I've already made one that's just plaster another one that looks like it's terracotta and now this one is the stone looking one which I kind of had a theme going for this video which I usually have a theme so I wanted it all to kind of be cohesive and a match um, for this one I did use just a Dollar Tree glass vase and then also more of that laundry line and I use the exact same color mix from the previous one with a candle holder um, obviously I just made a little bit more of it and the same same thing I just tapped on the paint onto the vase and then make sure that it's completely dry before you go to the next coat I did actually do three coats of this paint on this one And last but not least, we're going to make a couple of these wall sconces and I really, really like these. At first I had them inside of the house, but then I put them outside with my um, outdoor spring decor and I think they look great out there. So I don't know where I'm going to keep them yet. To make these, I did use two of these silver platters from Dollar Tree, which are new to my store. This is the first year that I see them. And then one of these little planters from Dollar Tree as well. I think these come in a pack of either three or four. And then just made a mark with my pencil just so that I make a straight line. And with my hot tool, which I will have in the description down below, um, I am going to melt it in half. I tried scissors, but they, it broke all jagged. And so just be really careful because I have burnt myself twice now with this tool one pretty good just recently after it's melted in half I am going to take the hot tool and just try to smooth it out as best as I can so it's not just bumpy and jagged so I'll be using some white acrylic paint to paint the the platters and I actually made this DIY a week or two before this whole situation is happening so I'm literally using paper towels like a maniac here without realizing we're gonna have a shortage of them and by tapping the paint on there, it does give it a textured look. I did do about two coats onto each platter. Flickering the memories, the Polaroids, yellowed in the sun, longing to be seen. So come and hide, hide with me, hide. I am using the Robin's Egg Blue on this one and I also did do two coats on this to just cover it nicely and using that same blue a little bit of my chalkboard paint and more of the Robin's Egg Blue I mixed it around and then just you know mix it gently use a sponge brush to give it a little bit more of dimension on the sides and then I use a stippling brush to do the inside of the platter. So once it's all painted and dried, I went ahead and glued my planters with just some hot glue, added a little bit of greenery, and then some moss.
Cause they know what's coming We try to wash away our broken years But it's so hard in the cold summer enjoy this video I would love it if you guys gave me a thumbs up you guys don't have no idea how much those help me um, any questions concerns comments down below leave me your shout out for the next video and uh, don't forget to subscribe I'll see you guys on the next one bye Hello.